Today, Jim will show you how you can make a power presentation in PowerPoint. So please, let's all come to Now, on my way here today, on the train, I was reading a book called A Step Back, is a setup, they come back. And on page 9 of the books, it tells the story about Africa. It goes, every morning in Africa, a gazelle looks up. And it knows that it must run faster than the fastest lion in order for it to survive. But every morning in Africa, a lion looks up. And it knows that it must run faster than the slowest gazelle in order for it to survive. You see, in Africa, it doesn't matter if you're a gazelle or a lion. What matters is that when the sun rises, you need to be in front. Now, as I've, re as I've read and reflected, it occurred to me that we all need to be like the lion and the gazelle. We all need to be running. And it doesn't matter if you are a male or a female. If you've been working for 10 years or first year uni, we all need to be running in a pursuit of knowledge. I show hands if that's the reason why you're here today, in a pursuit of knowledge, to learn something. And did anyone else come here for any other reasons? No? No, last time, sorry. To see you. To see you. <laughs> that's a very nice, in, in fact, in my other workshop, someone said that I came to listen to you speak. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that coming to us. Very much appreciate it. But you see, it's this realization that knowledge is so important that propelled Murat and I to organize these speaking workshop series for you. And today will be the first of those series of workshops. And today we'll be talking about how you can prepare power presentations in PowerPoint. And we have two main segments. In the first half, we're going to how you can prepare PowerPoint presentations as a first aid. And now in the second segment, we'll look at how you can prepare PowerPoint presentations <coughs> as a visual aid. After which we'll have a question and answer period and we'll close the session. Now let's get started. Let me ask you this, do you know what happened on the 22nd of May 1990? And I will give you a hint. It's not my birthday. <laughs> Any suggestions? <laughs> I'm sorry? The Mayflower? The Mayflower? Uh, I hope it relates to the PowerPoint that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Does it? Well, believe it or not, the 22nd of May 1990 marks the release of the first version of Windows PowerPoint. And I would know this as a fact because I looked it up on Wikipedia. But more importantly, in less than 20 years, PowerPoint has become the most widely used presentation program ever. Now, show of hands if you've used PowerPoint before. That's everyone here. And show of hands if you've used it before, you think you're quite good at it. We have quite a few experts here. And Chris here has just agreed to uh, conduct the second half of the session for us. Have you not? Sure. Sure? Okay. Would you like to tell us your uh, relationship with PowerPoint? Uh, perhaps a few minutes Oh, more. well, it's, uh, it's been an up and down relationship, Jim, full of disputes and. Uh, <laughs> domestic violence, really. But, Is that right? <laughs> yeah, but it, at the end, I think, um, yes, you, you, you learn to woo PowerPoint and by like, giving it lots of gifts and love and care. And, uh, <laughs> eventually, things get all right. I like the way how you put it. I love it. You know, given that Chris here is an expert, and I believe in the peer exchange of information. So what that means is that Chris probably came here today with his own perspective of how you do presentations, and hopefully, you can walk away with mine. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, I said today, PowerPoint has now become the backbone to corporate presentations. But the issue is, most presenters, they don't know how to present PowerPoints effectively. Most presenters, they use the slides as their notes. So effectively, they're using the PowerPoint as their first aid. And as a result of this, what you tend to see is that there's near clear organization of slides. There's way too many slides. And there's even worse. In some cases, they don't really read the slides to you. Has that happened to you before? Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it frustrating? Because first, we can all read. And 
we can all read, right? Yeah. Yep. Because mm -hmm. last night I was, I was in a workshop and someone told me to never to assume. Because whenever you assume, you'll make an ass of the universe. So that's why I had to make sure. So first, we can all read. And second, we can all read faster in their speaking rate. And third, why do we need a speaker? All they do is read to us. So never, ever read to your audience. In fact, the moment that you start reading to your audience, you're losing one of the most important keys to connecting to your audience. Do you know what it is? Your eye contact. In fact, eye contact that regardless how pleasing to the eye your backside may be, <laughs> if you don't have any eye contact, it'll be very difficult for you to connect with your audience later on. So remember this, in speaking, the eyes have it. In speaking, the eyes have it. The other thing we talked about earlier is that there's no clear organization of slides, and there's way too many slides. And the result of this is that we have a fat PowerPoint. Fat in terms of what contents per slide, and the number of slides there is in the PowerPoint. Now, fat is a concept that I can really like because most of you would not know this, but as a child, I was one fat little bit. In fact, if you were to look at a photo of me as a child, you would see me, but you would not recognize it to be me. <laughs> and that's, that's a fact. I know that some of you are thinking, looking at me now and thinking, no way, look at this guy. This guy has the potential to be like the next Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I the only person that's thinking that? But the truth is, as a child, I was overweight. And at times, I actually look myself in the mirror, look over my reflections and ask, why? Why am I overweight? I mean, it's not like I don't play in sports. In fact, at the time, I was a regular on the basketball court, tennis courts, and the food court. <laughs> <laughs> and then one night, I was reading a book by Susan Jeffers. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Have you heard of that book before? A few people. Now, as I read and reflected, it occurred to me, that even though I did not like to be overweight, I was also afraid of changing my lifestyle. I'm sure that you've been in a similar situation before in which you knew exactly what you wanted, you knew exactly how you could achieve it, but you just never took the action to achieve it. So I know that at that moment, I was at an intersection of choices. I could either let things be the way it is, or I can take action to change the circumstances. I don't apply. And I chose to change. And that day, KFC lost a customer <laughs> to Subway. Yeah. So the point is, if you have too much KFC, you will be fat. Mm -hmm. So the question that you should be asking yourself when you do PowerPoints is, are you feeding your slides with too much KFC? Mm -hmm. Are you feeding your slides with too much KFC? Now, KFC is an acronym. It stands for kaleidoscopic fuzzy logic, and commentaries. So what that means is that your PowerPoint slides, they should not be kaleidoscopic in nature. They should not have fuzzy logic, and you should not have too much commentaries. Now let's look at each element in turn. So the first one is kaleidoscopic. Now I know that some of you may be thinking this, so I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Some of you might be thinking, how do you spell it? And I can tell you right now that I don't know. But I bet Marat does. Sure. Marat, how do you spell kaleidoscope? K-A-L-E-I-D-O-S-D-O-P-I-C. Is it? Oh, I'm guessing now that's right. Let's give it a hand. <laughs> Does anyone else in the room actually know how to spell kaleidoscope? They can actually confirm that he's right and not mm -hmm. just laughing. You believe him? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm not actually surprised that he knows the answer. Because the answer is right here. Good job. 